what is going on guys I'm back with another video showing you how to make it's just standard definition um, just kind of square looking video look a lot better a lot more interesting and a lot more colorful so I'm using Adobe Premiere Pro CS6 for this this is the software which I probably recommend because it's just really flexible really great um, editing software so I'm going to just drag in my footage here to the um, little input box here and if we scrub through it, we can see it's me just putting the camera through um, like grass and stuff like that. So it's quite an interesting little clip to work with. So when we put it onto the timeline, you can see that it has, it's not actually filling the frame completely. Now that is because it is 640 by 480 video, but the project uh, that I've given it, I think it's slightly more than that so it's a bit smaller but what you need to do to fix that is go to effect controls I already have it open, it's a little tab here go to video effects um, open up motion tab and then we go down to scale it's at 100% if we just drag it left or right you can see it gets bigger and smaller just have a mess around to see what works for you but for me it's 164 I set it to and it gets right to the edges which look quite nice so once you've done that, you're thinking, well, it looks alright, but cinema, they have it a lot more panoramic and a lot wider, like letterbox it's called. So we'll go and import something. Um, basically what I have is an effect to make, um, it's like an image that you put over and it makes it look um, a lot wider so this is actually you can download this I'll put, I'll put a link in the description for it but I'm going to choose anoramic um, standard def widescreen and just double click that now we have this in our project box just drag it over to the timeline make sure it's on top of the video and make sure it's the same length Oh, and by the way, you see how it's got the audio on this. We don't actually want the audio just now, so it's a quick tip. If you want to remove audio, just right click and unlink. And now you can just select it and delete that. Anyway, back to the wide angle um, effect. So you'd select the wide angle um, thing on the timeline, go to video effects, and then back to scale again. And basically, you just make it. Um, bigger so that it will just come in and will look like that by the way the little view box here I've got it at half quality because when we start laying on um, more graphics and more effects it starts to slow down a bit because it's having to do that without rendering so it won't look as bad as that but still not too interesting footage so now we've got the letterbox we're going to go to the effects tab down here it may not be um, all down here because you can actually um, mix around all the things in Premiere Pro but for me I've got it here I'm going to type in colour correcting or just colour for me and then we're going to use the freeway colour correction tool just drag that on and then we're going to go to our effect controls all you do on Premiere Pro you just scroll down and you've got your new effect ready and you have these three um, colour wheels for me, I like to have for grass, maybe a bit of green there, and then some blue, like that. And I normally forget the highlights because that's just small amounts. Unless there's a sky, which there is, and I have that as a blue. Because it looks quite interesting like that, I find. So I'm going to leave it like that, that really works for me. And if I um, go control and the at like an um, email app on your keyboard, click that and it will pop it up, so there you go again, low quality at the moment so the sky is a bit more blue and just more interesting colours at the moment if we scroll down, like underneath the colour wheels you see we have a lot more control but we're going to go to saturation and normally if you have a compact camera, which I'm using at the moment it won't let too much bright colours come in so people may hate this but I just stick all the way to 200 um, saturation which means if you look compared to 
before it looks a lot brighter, doesn't it? And a lot more interesting. And you can see even now it's starting to slow down a little bit. And there are a lot more things again you can just mess around with. Please do because it's great fun. Um, but I'm not going to do it at the moment. I'm going to go to again in the effects tab. We're going to type in black. Um, no, not sorry, not black. Uh, contrast. Same thing. Contrast um, and brightness and contrast tool. Drag that on again and just scroll down like I said before. Now here we have the contrast tool. It's a bit more sensitive, um, but I like to have it at maybe 20. So just again mess around with it, and you see it is starting to look really quite cool now compared to the stock footage. So now we have got the colours and the panoramic um, letterbox design, and if we click play, it looks quite nice now. But we I don't like how fast it's moving, it's quite like raw footage looking. So we're going to right click on the video and go to speed and uh, duration. And I want to slow it down a bit, I'm going to put it to 75%. And now I might be able to put the quality up now, see what happens. Also, because we're um, filming with fraps, it does slow it down even more. Maybe, there you go. So now it. Now I'm going to have to put it back to half again. But, yeah, if we look, it looks a bit more interesting in slow mo. Still not slow enough. I think I'm probably going to have to maybe make it a bit slower. We'll try 60. And remember, we need to make sure the. Um, the wide angle letterbox is the same length. So there you go, it's a bit more interesting now. So then, I think that looks pretty decent now, I'm going to render that. So, this is just if you don't know how to render. You go to File, and then Export to Media. And then I'm going to choose, I like H.264 to be honest, I like that a lot. It's probably my favourite format. Now if you check the width and height here, if your camera is just low res 640 by 480 video, then leave this alone as long as it looks alright here. And then make sure the frame rate matches your camera if you want it to. So I'm going to switch that to 30 FPS, so that's what my camera shoots at. And we'll just leave that at the moment. And if we go to bitrate settings, if you want it to look at its best, go to VBR 2 pass and then 14 and 14 and audio, we've got no audio in this actually so we can untick the audio and we're gonna name it maybe um, cinematic video and then export that so I actually use this um, technique to make my latest film, well, little, small little film, um, there's a link to it right here. Um, I use this technique to make it look a lot more interesting. Basically, it was a pretty boring video. I just went on a walk and took some videos, just, you know, chucked all, chucked all them in to Adobe Premiere Pro and thought, right, I can do something quite interesting with this. So I got them all together, got a bit of blur, got a bit of slow-mo, um, got a lot of nice colours going, cinematic um, cinematic widescreen um, design on it, and well it made it quite viewable, you know, it made it quite interesting, and it wasn't what actually the footage was, it was just the whole feel of it, the background music was quite good, and um, I used a uh, I think it was a, a Russian theme tune, something, it was a Russian song I had in the background going, and that was quite good. So, thank you so much for watching my video, and for the end, I'll show you the clip we have just made.